my name is Blake Zimbleman, and my project is called Taste of the Rainbow. My question was, does color affect taste? My hypothesis was that color will affect taste because people associate different colors with different flavors. When I researched, I found out if you go in almost any food aisle in the store, you'll find foods that contain artificial dyes to make them more appealing. Cheetos, Fruit Loops, cookies. A Cheeto's color is mainly gray before that they are artificially dyed. But this does not only apply to junk food. Strawberries, orange peels, even salmon also contain artificial dyes to make them more appealing. Typically, red food makes us think of something sweet. Yellow makes us think of something sour. Green makes us think of apples and a tart flavoring. And uh, the darker colors make us think of spoiled or expired food. So, in my research, I used frosting, but most people use apple juice. And to conduct this experiment, I used food coloring, cream cheese, powdered sugar, butter spoons, cups, KitchenAid, and taste testers. My procedure was I started my research and gathered my materials to make my frosting. Next, I had taste testers come and try the frosting. Then I asked them to describe which flavor that they thought each frosting was. Finally, I thanked them and recorded my data. My observations were three people thought green was green apple, one person thought green was strawberry, three people thought green was lemon, three people thought red was cherry, four people thought red was strawberry, one person thought blue was strawberry, four people thought blue was blueberry, and two people thought blue was grape. So, in conclusion, yes, color does affect taste, and my hypothesis was correct. If I were to do this project again, I would use apple juice and more people. Thank you. My pro science project is called the Five Second Rule Dirty versus Clean. My hypothesis is that, that, that the kiwi that was on the ground for five seconds will have the most germs because my dogs always lay and have accidents on the floor. My research is that it takes about three, one to three days if it was for the bacteria to grow on petri dishes. Um, and the petri dishes were incubated in the, in the heat setting between 85 to 100 Fahrenheit. And the higher the temperature of the incubator, the faster the petri dishes grow. And what that means is that if the petri dishes were incubated in 85 to 100 Fahrenheit, it would take one to three days to grow. But if it was incubated in uh, 70 to 85 Fahrenheit, it would take three to five days to grow. My materials is a incubator, petri dishes, cotton swabs, a kiwi timer, a kiwi timer, and a dirty floor. My procedure is that first we cut a kiwi into two pieces and we dropped one of the kiwi slices onto the floor for exactly five seconds. We took a cotton swab and swabbed the kiwi uh, that was on the floor and put it in an incubator. And then we swabbed the other petri dish and rubbed it inside the, uh, we took the other kiwi and rubbed it inside the other petri dish. And then we took, and then we put both of the petri dishes into the incubator. My observation and results. Day one, there was no bacteria on the petri dishes at all. Day two, there were four even water droplets and I wanna dig more deeper to see why it grew water droplets. And then day three, it grew more, it grew more water droplets than before. Day four, we saw more bacteria. We saw like bacteria on the petri dish. And then day five, both of them were filled, in bacteria, filled with bacteria. Uh, my conclusion is that the five second rule does not prevent germs. My hypothesis are that the clean kiwi petri dish grew bacteria because of unseen bacteria from the knife or plate. If I were to do this again, I would use a different fruit, like a grape or something, and I would incubate it in 85 to 100 because it took 3 to 5 days because I incubated it in 70 to 85. So that's my science project. Hi, my name is Anderson Alabin, and my project title is How Do Video Games Affect Heart Rate or My Heart Plus Video Games? My statement of purpose is I wanted to learn about how, Oh, how video games affect my heart rate because I play a lot of video games. I also wanted to learn about my heart rate. I, I, well, I, because I, I was curious about how the heart works.
my hypothesis was, I believe that that um, playing video games will only increase but not decrease his heart rate because of intense moments and jump scares. My my uh. My uh, research was heart rate, also no, known as pulse, is the number of times your heartbeat can, it beats in one minute. Heart, heart rate can vary from person to person, person to person, and many things can influence heart rate. Some factors that influence heart rates are age, air temperature, fit, uh, fitness, if you're sitting or standing, and, or even just emotion. These factors tie into video games as video games can affect emotion, which would lead to a change in heart rate. It is hard to find an up to date. It, it sources for how video games affect heart rates, so my hypothesis is from guessing on. My materials I used for my experiment were book, iPad with Roblox, Nintendo Switch with Minecraft, computer, and Pulse XML. My procedure was a sit quietly and read for 10 minutes. It's second, take Pulse with Pulse Oximeter and uh, find a resting heart rate. Play Roblox for 10 minutes, take Pulse using Pulse Oximeter. Play, play, play Minecraft for 10 minutes, take Pulse using Pulse Oximeter. Play Self Trackers for 10 minutes, take Pulse Pulse using Pulse Oximeter. My resting heart rate was at 84 BPM, which is my control, or my reading heart rate. My Playing Roblox was 83 BPM, playing Minecraft was 90 BPM, and playing Self Trackers was 86. As you can see right here, Minecraft, resting, reading heart rate, Roblox, and uh, the reason, the reason I, Roblox, uh, stores, uh gave me that relaxed me a little is because I knew what was gonna happen because I played the game lots of times before, probably up to ten or twenty. My observation. It, my observation is I learned that your heart rate can both increase and decrease from playing video games. I believe that video games in couldn't decrease heart rate, but, on but only increase heart rate before seeing the results of my experiment. My conclusion was my hypothesis was incorrect. The reason my hypothesis was incorrect is because this video game, because Roblox makes me more relaxed instead of tense than Minecraft or uh, Cell Shockers. My, my bibliography is mayoclinic.org, which is for my research. My acknowledgement was, uh, I would like to thank my sister for helping me carry out oh, my experiment as well as my mom. Hello, my name is Augustine Stangy, and my presentation is called Shocking Batteries. My question is, which type of food battery produces the most electricity? The reason why I chose to do this project is because we were learning about electricity in class. I learned I learned that electricity is the movement of electrons jumping from one atom to another. A cell has a pos a cell has a positive electrode called anode and a negative electrode called cathode. It also has a liquid called electrolyte. I also learned that foods that are high in potassium and sodium are most likely to produce electricity. So my hypothesis was that the potato would produce the most electricity because it is both high in, in potassium and sodium. For my materials, I used three potatoes, three apples, three oranges, and three bananas. I also used a penny, a galvanized screw, two wires, and and a voltmeter. For my procedure, I cut a slit in the in the food. I stuck a penny in the slit, and then I screwed the galvanized screw in an inch away. Then I attached wires to each one of the metals. Then I attached the red lead the red lead wire of the voltmeter to the to the wire attached to the penny. I attached the, I attach, and then I attached the black, the black lead wire to the, to the wire attached to the galvanized screw. I looked at my results and then I repeated this three times for each food. So I learned that the results are not only based on how much sodium and potassium are in the food. I also learned that all the foods produce electricity and that there was not a significant difference between 
any of the food. In conclusion, my hypothesis was wrong, and the banana produced the most electricity with 1.7 volts. The banana, and the potato, and the orange produced 1.5 volts, and the apple only produced 1.3 volts. If I were to do this project again, I would not only use solid food, but maybe baby food and and liquids. So, so, so maybe it would have different results. Hi, my name is Caitlin Vasquez Beckman. I am in fourth grade, and my project is called Orbi or Not Orbi. I wanted, I wanted to know what would happen if I put Orbeez in different liquids. The reason for this is because one day my little sister and I were playing science lab, and um, and we put and we mixed together a bunch of different liquids, and um, then we saw what happened. And so it, they shrunk. But um, and I wanted to for my project, I wanted to know what happened if I put them in different liquids, except they were separate. So um, for to test this, I use. Orbeez, I didn't. I cannot use lemon juice. I used vinegar because we, um, because we did not have lemon juice accessible at the time, and it has the exact same pH as um, vinegar. So we you just used that, and we so you, we used Orbeez vinegar, nail polish remover, bleach, um, borax, baking soda, dish soap, water, bowls, spoons, a ruler, and a camera. Um, to so for our procedure, I used. I gathered my materials. I um, I labeled my bowls. I put liquid in. I put my liquids in my bowls. I put the Orbeez in the bowls. I wa I observed, and I made my conclusion. And then I cleaned up. So, for bleach, the Orbe completely disintegrated, as you can see here. For nail polish remover, it grew bulges on the Orbe. It grew these little bulges, but then on day two, it completely. Um, I don't have a picture for day two. But for day two, it completely, the bulges grew, morphed together and um, it was huge. So then for my baking soda one, it shrunk. Vinegar, it shrunk. Now polish remover, here's just another angle of the now polish remover. And then for dish soap, hold on, Dana. Um, for dish soap, it just got really messy. The water one also shrunk, but I think the reason for this is because we don't have a picture of the water one except for up here. Um, actually, I don't have a picture of the water one up there either. Uh, but, um, I think the reason for this is that we, because we put them in front of the windowsill, like as you can see in most of my pictures, we put them in front of a windowsill. So that, and I think the sun hit them, and I also made the mistake of not topping them. So that is, um, I think that is why um, most of them shrunk. If I were to do this again, I would probably put them in different environments, like in the freezer, in front of a space heater, uh, or I would, and I would also, I, and I would, I would also, like mix together a bunch of different liquids, although I would not mix together um, vinegar and baking soda, just that's the one that I probably wouldn't mix together just for explosion purposes. So, thank you. My name is Zinzu, and um, the title of my project is called What Water Filter Cleans Water the Best? My hypothesis was that I think the um, paper towel and, among the paper towel and the cloth um, the coffee filter would do the best because it was made to filter out coffee and it had the smallest holes. My statement of purpose was I wondered how to get clean water um, because a lot of things require clean water. Um, I also wanted to know um, the purpose of the layers in each filter. And one more thing that I wanted to know was um, which group of materials would do the best. So I put a different material on the neck of each bottle. Um, my materials were four plastic water bottles, scissors, duct tape, black Sharpie, coffee filter, cloth, paper towel, a needle, bottle cap, rubber bands, sand, fish gravel, rocks, and dirty water. My procedure was that I took four plastic water bottles from my recycling bin. Um, I cut them in half and I used um, the bottom of each bottle to catch the filtered out water. And I rubber banded the materials onto each neck of the bottles, except for my, for my control because um, my mom helped me poke some, poke some holes into the cap with a needle. Um, and then I, um, and then I went scavenging for some, uh, 
for the materials I needed, so I got sand, fish gravel, and rocks. I cleaned the rocks because I didn't want it to contaminate the water, and I put the same amount in each um, of the plastic water bottles. Um, then I went into my yard and I scooped up some snow and I put some soil to make it more filthier and I put um, the water into each filter to get my results. I, my research was that I searched how to get clean water, um, um, what was in each filter, uh, what was in filters because um, I wanted to get an idea on what I could put in my filter. And another thing I researched was um, how long uh, a paper towel could last under all the pressure because it didn't want it to collapse. Um, my discussion was that I had a problem. Um, my control was um, cleaner than my um, cloth um, because the, the control had smaller holes in the cap than the cloth, so it was dirt, so it was cleaner. Um, my, um, my conclusion was that my hypothesis was right. Um, the coffee filter did the best, but paper towel came up very close. My, result my results were that um, the rocks took out the big chunks of soil, um, the gravel took out the smaller chunks, the, the sand took out the particles of, sea, um, of soil, and um, the variable at the neck of the bottles took out the, um, the things that make water yellow. If I were to do this project again, I would, um, I would make the holes onto, on the control um, bigger so it would be dirtier than my variable.